Hello, everybody. So, just like everybody else, I got dream, desire, and drive to accomplish many things in life. And since I always believe that the best moment of triumph and sense of accomplishment come not just from the realization of our dream, of my dream, but also others. I feel so blessed that I'm a teacher because it is the nature of my profession to inspire others, to help others pursue their goals. But here's the thing. We are usually more bothered about the struggle, the problems, the challenges that we face in life, these disadvantages. We think about how they hold us back, how they hinder us from realizing our dream. We focus so much on how these disadvantages limit us that it slowly becomes our reality. I used to have that belief, especially when I was at your age, when I was doing my bachelor's degree. But I'm glad that I discovered we can take advantage of our disadvantages. So how cool is that? We usually complain about things that we don't hate, we don't have, or we hate ourselves for our undesirable traits. But what do you know? Your disadvantages might be your advantage in disguise. Now I was born in Sabah. I grew up in Sabah. And then I studied in Sabah. And eventually, now I'm working in Sabah. Now I'm working in Keningau. Keningau is an isolated place. It's an interior region in Sabah. And I was born in Kota Blut, another village, another interior area in Sabah. And let's admit it, Sabah is the least developed state in Malaysia. And quite frankly, it's, it's pretty far from Kuala Lumpur, our capital city. And it's definitely further for me to go to, to come here, Sintok. Um, and a lot of us, most of us, like my students, came from low socioeconomic backgrounds with little exposure to the outside world. So yeah, I might say that I have lots and lots, my students and I have lots and lots of disadvantages. But I learned that we can turn our disadvantages into our actual strength. So they, we can learn to explore and exploit our disadvantages so they push us further and beyond instead of limiting us. So last year, in 2007, uh, I took a surprise victory as the first Asian to win the prestigious award, International Innovation and Entrepreneurship Excellence in Teaching in Paris against other finalists from the UK, the US, Russia, Germany, Canada, Denmark, and Colombia. I was placed first, the Russian placed second, the British and American jo uh, clinch a joint third place. So it felt like winning an Olympic gold medal. I always wanted to go to the Olympic and win gold medals, but I couldn't make it to the actual Olympic. But then I made it to my own Olympic, uh, and then I won gold medal. So it, it seems pretty cool to me at least. Thank you. So, um, so who would have thought that someone like me won? I was the only Asian finalist I was the only school teacher, I was the only one teaching in the rural area, while those that I was competing with, they were professors teaching in prestigious universities in developed nations. Typically, these are what we call as disadvantages. I got lots of disadvantages, but to me, I turned my disadvantages into my actual advantage, the extra thing that I got that nobody else had in the competition, which, me st which made me stand out more unique or extraordinary. As a result, I won. And I'm not saying I'm the best. I still got so much to learn. There are so many people better than me. You guys are much better than me. But maybe I knew how to use what I got to my advantage. But since I'm a school teacher, I would be nothing without my students. I wouldn't be able to do any of this if it's not because of them who inspired me in the first place, who made me realize that nothing is impossible. Now, when I first entered the school that I'm currently teaching, Keningau, which is located in a rural area, I learned about this state-level debate competition, which this school took place every year and never won. 
and the champion for this debate competition had been out of the same city school. And the year before I entered the school, that school team, my school team, lost the first round during the previous championship. So it's a very textbook competition, you know, English language debate competition, a state level debate competition. Uh, of course, the city school will always win, at least in Sabah. So I was so determined, we were so determined to challenge and change the status quo. So within a year, we came back, despite our location and our backgrounds, we emerged as the champion of the debate tournament. We won the debate unanimously. We also won the best speaker award. How did we do it? We worked hard. We ducked in, but the most important thing was that instead of seeing our backgrounds as our limitation, we saw it as our greatest source of motivation. We got so much to prove because of where we came from, who we were. We wanted to challenge the status quo. We wanted to show that no matter where you come from, if you work hard, you can accomplish anything. And we did it. We went for it and we did it. And this is the first to many. Although we are a rural school, but we are doing many things that others usually don't do if they are in our position. And we have been winning many competitions, which defy many odds. So, public speaking, debate, poetry, slang, drama, quiz, tournament, talent show, you name it, we love doing them all. Including innovation and entrepreneurship competitions. So we are breaking stereotypes on rural community, you know? So, and again, despite our lack of funding, resources, and negative stereotypes that my students might be facing, being students from a vocational school, and in Malaysia we have these stereotypes on vocational schools, or students who are doing vocational studies, that they are not that smart, and some of them are underperforming students. Well, we managed to become dominant in innovation and entrepreneurship competitions. You wouldn't expect that students in rural areas, they can be very, very creative and innovative. So this is one of my students who won a state-level innovation competition last year. Uh, we were the only non-urban school to take part in that competition, and we triumphed. We had nine innovation entering the contest, and each earned a medal, and we had five gold medals, which is pretty impressive. And he won because he invented a light and, cheap, uh, a light and cheaper tool that, allow farm, that allows farmers or low-income people in Kuningau, in our area, to actually carry out their own fogging process using this tool. Instead of getting people to do it for them, which can cost a lot, or buying the expensive machine, they could do it on their own, or he could do it for them with lower charge. And he came up with this idea by studying the community, studying our surroundings. So it shows that our disadvantaged area might be the key to the next winning brilliant idea. So what I can sum up from so the experience that my students and I had is that there are at least three ways of how you can take advantage of your disadvantages. Now I always tell myself this, your strength makes you great, yes. Your limitation makes you greater. So first, your disadvantage makes you unique, rare, and extraordinary. Second, your disadvantages can be your greatest source of motivation. And third, your disadvantages might be the key to the next breakthrough ideas of yours. Your disadvantages make you unique and extraordinary. So remember, your greatest self is, being, is you being who you really are. So no matter where you come from or who you are, your weaknesses, your limitations, your past, your mistakes, your failure, the best thing that you can do is to embrace them and make use of them to the fullest. The least thing that you can do is to learn from them so you can be better. So instead of trying to run away or hide them or feel humiliated or feel inferior, you should say, this is who I am and this is why I am great, because you are. When I was in Paris to present my case study for that global award, a lot of people would probably say that the idea of me being the only Asian finalist, being the only school teacher, the only one teaching in rural area, competing against professors from prestigious universities in developed nations was a crazy idea. And it probably was, but then I like crazy ideas because I'm crazy too. And I'm not, I wasn't just the only Asian finalist. I'm from Sabah and I'm Bajo. Bajo is one of the indigenous minorities which are native to Sabah, something that we all should know about. But I never saw myself as being inferior. 
and none of us should ever feel that way because we, nobody is inferior. And I was so excited to find out how out of ordinary I was. So I was like, I, I was the only Asian finalist? Yay! Yeah. So I was the only one school teacher here? Yay! Yeah. So I was the only one teaching at the area? And I'm from Sabah? Like, I was so excited. So, thank you. So during the competition, I decided to do something that people usually don't do. So I explained to the audience and the judges where I came from, who my students were, the location and condition of our schools. I even showed them photos of Sabah, of Keningau, and my school. I even told them a few stories about my students and how we felt like we gained some success. Although it wasn't, a, a, although it wasn't that much, but it, it meant a lot for us. So I didn't try to be someone that I wasn't. I didn't try to sound intelligent or know it all because I know I still got so much to learn. I didn't make up things that we never did. I didn't brag or exaggerate about anything because there was nothing for me to gloat over. I just showed them what we did in our school, the impacts it had on my students, how excited we were, and how passionate I was in exploring more opportunities for my students in innovation and entrepreneurship because it's just what I wanted them to do. And the next thing I knew, when they announced the winner, I was, I was announced as the winner. And a lot of people were inspired by it, and I hope you do. And your disadvantages can be your greatest source of motivation. Located in a rural area, having less things in life, dealing with stereotypes, being looked down upon, can really push them to work hard, to persist regardless of any challenges, to be resilient no matter how others treat them. So it's impressive. The desire to get something, even if it's too little, is too strong because they never had it before. They are willing to do anything to accomplish things that might be nothing for others but mean everything for them. So just imagine, they were willing to practice night and day, weekdays and weekends, for that one debate competition which we never won, because they were so determined to win it. And we eventually, we won it. So, they, so this dedication, this determination is seen in almost everything that they do, and it's amazing. And your disadvantages might be the key to the next breakthrough ideas of yours. Living and working in this area, in that area, cutting out, made me realize that our surrounding is where the opportunities truly lie. Now my students and I ventured into innovation and entrepreneurship as well as community service because, and we were able to win many competitions because of our practical and brilliant innovations or approaches that we developed to solve the problems in our community and people were really impressed with it. The key element to these innovative ideas derived from our so-called disadvantages as we explored and studied our community, our surrounding. So, as identify specific problems, design solutions to, to these problems through either product, products or projects. So the goal isn't so much about winning competitions, although I've been talking about competitions, but it's about the quality learning experience that these students are able to get and the platforms for them to develop and carry out their ideas, which could be fundamental to their individual development as well as the progress of the community. So we, we usually think about how our surrounding denies us of opportunities to go further. We look at the world outside of our location. Uh, we look at what other people are doing and tell ourselves how lucky we are if only we are in different parts of the world. But the key to the next great idea might lie where we are standing on, where we were born, grew up, and perhaps currently live in. So just, I think about two weeks ago, I made another headline when I won my fourth global award in Dubai. I won Community Award for Citizenship and Just Education Awards 2008. I'm sorry, 2018. So I became the first, so thank you. Um, so I became the first Malaysian to be nominated, not for one, but for two global awards. And I was also the first person and the only one to be nominated for two awards at the same time. And I became the first Malaysian to win. Um, and when I, when I uh, returned to Malaysia, I received Hella's welcome. So I felt like Lee Chong Wei. You know, I admire Lee Chong Wei, I think a lot of us do. And you know, to, be, to experience something like this, it felt really awesome. And I received Hella's welcome for my achievement. So it seems hard to believe that somebody like me, I'm just a teacher, will be able to do all of this and can go really far. So I, I, I always tell media about this. 
If winning in Paris last year felt like winning an Olympic gold medal, uh, winning this one in Dubai felt like winning an Oscar. So, um, and I wouldn't imagine, I would never imagine that I would be able to do this years ago because of my so-called disadvantages that turned out to be the reasons where I am now. So remember, um, no matter what obstacles, barriers, disadvantages that you got, you learn to explore and exploit them. Because the things that you're worried about, the things that you might be ashamed of, might be the things that make you the greatest of all. Uh, because you are meant to be ch champion. Now I've won my Olympic gold, gold medals, like how I wish it, and I've won my Oscar, and I'm pretty sure you have won yours or will win yours, because you are champions. Every each of you is a champion. Thank you.